On this recording, you will hear an orchestra of singing birds. Every sound in this musical composition, every note, chord, background, solo, every sound and every combination of sounds was emitted originally from the throats of birds. If at certain moments they seem a little off pitch, it's because the bird you're hearing that moment sings a little off pitch. But keep in mind as you listen that nothing has been added. If you think you hear something that sounds like a particular musical instrument or a human voice or anything else other than bird calls, you're wrong. It's bird songs and nothing but bird songs that you're about to hear. The symphony of the birds is in three movements. Before hearing them, listen to the original bird calls from which these three movements are compiled recordings of the songs themselves before they were transformed on the tape machine, before they were lowered in pitch and reduced in speed. There are eight different birds in the first movement alone. The first is the Carolina chickadee, who reappears in the middle and again at the close of the first movement. This is the Carolina chickadee. The brief introduction is composed entirely of this little six-note call of the Carolina Chickadee. Then comes a short transitional passage into the opening long theme of the first movement. Both the transition and the theme itself are from the call of the Veery, also known as Wilson's Thrush. This is the Veery, his natural call. His solo in the first movement, if written on music paper, could be called Andante e Lirico. The second theme of the first movement is in two parts, one sung by the Baltimore Oriole, the other by the Orchard Oriole, And interspersed among these fragmentary themes of the Veery and the two Orioles is the song of the field sparrow. The next bird to appear in this first movement is the Harris sparrow. He sings single clear notes on different pitches. Then, after a brief reappearance of the Carolina chickadee, comes a jouncy little sequence from the throat of the meadowlark. And then comes the long, exquisite call of the winter wren. This one you'll recognize when you hear it at the end of the first movement. But at normal pitch, he sings so high and so rapidly that we miss almost entirely the fantastic intricacies of his little song. This is the Winter Wren. These eight birds and no others are in the first movement of the Symphony of the Birds. The second movement is a buffo section featuring the unlovely voice of the fish crow. Who renders not only trumpet solos, not too skillfully, but doubles on the trombone and tuba, sometimes in duet with himself. His raucous companions supply uninhibited audience response after each rendition with hysterical spasms of laughter. There are seven of them in all, and as a crowd, they're not too mannerly. Here they are, heard singly. The whippoorwill, the cowbird, white-breasted nuthatch, purple martin, blue jay, Chuck Will's widow, and the barred owl. (laughs) 
That's the gang that participates in this fish crow jam session. The final section, Misterioso, contains only thrushes. Olive-backed thrush. Wood thrush. Gray-cheeked thrush. and hermit thrush. No sounds in the background or anywhere else in this Mysterioso movement than the songs of those four thrushes. Well, now you've heard everything that went into the making of this piece called Symphony of the Birds. But it's not intended to sound like an aviary. It's intended to sound like this Symphony of the Birds.
Imagine you have suddenly come upon an open, sun-drenched clearing deep in the forest. The leaves and branches of the trees are faintly shimmering, blurred and indistinct in the strong, fierce light of day, and all around you, you hear a myriad of bird song. No single voice distinct, all blending in a constant but changing tonal patchwork. Now imagine another spot, perhaps not many paces away in this same forest, where you find only glimmers of light that can penetrate the dense foliage of the trees above and around you. And just as to your eyes, the shape of each branch, each leaf is sharpened in silhouette against brief patches of sky, so to your ears, the indiscriminate blur coming from the throats of hundreds of varieties of birds starts to take on a pattern of sound. The patterns, the sequence of notes, the flutters and slurs in the songs of many different birds are to be revealed to you in what is to follow as we return first to hear each solo bird in sequence in the clearing where his voice is heard as in nature to this semi-real darkness of a world transformed, an oral world where duration is doubled or tripled and where pitch, the precise pitch of a note, of any note, of all notes, is halved or quartered an octave at a time. Return then to the open clearing in the sun where the first of the multitude of birds singing there singles himself out from the rest for us to enjoy and to study. This is the cardinal. Thank <laughs> you. 
the robin. Summer Tanager. This is a yellow warbler. Blackburnian Wobbler. Songs Barrel.
Vesper Sparrow. Carolina Wren. Indigo Bunting. Purple Finch. <laughs> 